So now that we've done all that scary stuff, um, there's a couple of things that we need to be aware of. So uh, there are going to be ex there's a various ways you can exploit the browser. Uh, one of the things is that uh, Calipio, Calipio, which is a web filtering software, is default by installed is, is installed by default on uh, uh, when you install the web browser package with Tor. Now the issue there is that while Calipio does mostly all the right things. There are still ways that you can have attacks against Calippo because it's a known version. So if it's a known version of bundled software, you could write craft you could craftily write exploits to take advantage of that feature. Um, so that's one thing that while I don't have a sample of how to do that, that's one thing you could do to possibly further identify a user. Um, I think you can telnet directly to browse websites via the proxy. Um, so if you were to just use telnet to port 80 on google.com and have the, and torify that connection, you can look at whatever the web page is of Google or your website of Swayze as raw HTML and then render that HTML either on a different machine, and then you would have a, uh, well, you can't interact with it. That's the much safer way of actually browsing the web because you're actually just reading the text portion of the web. Uh, but obviously, will not not allow you to be able to, to, say, query Google because there's no way for you to restore that session easily. But that's a way that you could browse the web without a little bit more safer using Tor. You could use wget, you could use curl, one of those, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> um, well, let's do that. Because I don't know. Okay, I'm going to SSH over to zazz.vm. Actually, no. Uh, Zach.mdns.org. Uh, and don't do this as I'm typing this because this is actually going to my home PC. Uh, yes. PI. Okay. So let's tell net to Zach.preshell org on port 80. Oops. Yeah. Oh, you, okay, I know what's happening there. Because of the fact that uh, Freeshell.org is actually a using the virtual server. It actually requires the full name of the server to be included in the GET request. So I'll, I'm going to try this again. I'm not going to make any guarantees it will actually work. Yes. Hey, it worked. Okay. So I typed in get space HTTP Zach colon Zach.freeshell.org slash env.pl. Uh, we got the remote address. We got the remote host. And that was it for, for the remote information, just the IP address and the port that was used. So, I'm, so this is what I'm just going to talk about here. We can use also time, time queries. That would basically defeat the uh, the time zone analysis that could be performed. We could also use new HTML features to to exploit where a user is located or similar 
identifying characteristics, and of course we can also break Tor itself. Um, and these are all fixing or exploiting the browser vulnerabilities when we're talking about Tor. Okay. No, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's using cron. Um, basically, that way, if you have a query every hour, you don't know where you are. Um, so, Okay, so Polipo, which I was mentioning before, is an HTTP proxy which is installed by default with Windows installations of Tor, which filters out ads, JavaScript, and other stuff. But because Polipo is known to be installed with Tor, that can be used as an attack vector. Um, you can directly telnet to port and then get the main web page. Uh, if you're trying to get Google, this is what it looks like, which is a bunch of JavaScript. Uh, which is not really human readable, but depending on your website, that actually may be more human readable. Um, so for time zone analysis type stuff, which was one of the characteristics of internet connections, if rather than doing all the work when you're at work hours, just write a cron job to grab a web page, which would be expected for that the country for that period of time, that would be a good way of obfuscating the fact that you're trying to browse the web as a user in another country. So that's the point there that I was trying to make. So it's, it would be a little bit odd for someone to be accessing a website from uh, from the from the U.S. at noon when at say. Uh, Say if we were trying to access the site in North North Korea, where it would probably be midnight or something like that right now. So, I'm not really saying that that's an actual use case, but that's that's a general idea. But, uh, is there a question? Do you have a question? No. Okay. Cool. Uh, um, so you can it, use new versions of JavaScript. To basically trick the user into real to identifying more information than they should. If you do it, enable um, the JavaScript API for uh, with an Android, which was an old phone that I used to have. It did have a Tor client, but it went proxy any of the JavaScript through another site. So it, you could actually send the, use the JavaScript location API to request the location of where you are. And you could hit yes, and it would return where you are physically located uh, through Tor. So it, it, this is just to show that it is possible to do this. Um, most people wouldn't hit except to show their location through Tor, but it can be done. Um, so the other thing you can do is if you can if you can target the user itself to to trick the user into doing something it shouldn't. So if you can trick the user into opening a movie through Tor, or if you can trick the user into opening an FTP session through Tor, those additional type of data that's being transferred may or may not be going through a web proxy uh, that's configured for Tor. If uh, it is really, at one point I tried to see if this was happening and currently as of April 2012, this trick does not work, but it used to work. So um, where you could basically have an open FTP session, and the FTP session would, by default, go through your actual IP address instead of your the web browsers, the, through your Tor client's IP address. Basically, because the default configuration for the web browser that was being shipped with the web browser bundle uh, only had HTTP traffic going through Tor instead of uh, HTTP and FTP traffic going through Tor. So that would give you the actual IP address of the user. 
now at this point that is currently disabled. However, people may be saying, eh, I don't need to use a standard browser bundle because I'm going to be doing something more advanced. They may be tricked into doing something they shouldn't because they don't have any proxy settings possible. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, there's a couple of different ways of exploiting Tor if, you know, if, if someone's going through it. You can identify uh, if someone's coming through Tor or not, and they can start looking for long-term cookies. Probably long-term cookies will not be set unless the Tor, the web browser they're using is configured uh, to use the internet as well as Tor. If that's the case, you may be able to have someone that's <coughs> previously and possibly do some correlation back to the original user. You can trick the web browser or the user into doing something they shouldn't. You can statistically look at Tor to ter determine possibly the content of what's happening, of what's going through Tor. That's sort of a very hard case for it to actually happen, but that's something you could possibly do. Um, basically, there was a phenomenon. It's basically the patterns of speech uh, that that people were able to use as a Skype attack to, within a reasonable degree of accuracy, I think 50% know what someone was talking about through a Skype conversation, even though the entire conversation was encrypted in Skype. It was basically just looking at the size of the packets and other attributes of the packets to determine what was being said. Um, you can also look at, at how a web browser is requesting traffic um, to possibly able, be able to determine where a user is browsing. So what that basically is saying is that the way that IE requests a web page is different from the way that Netscape requests a web page, which is different from the way that Firefox requests a web page. Basically, in Firefox, the images get, get, get loaded before the text, or in IE, it's slightly different where the text is rendered and the tables are rendered, and then the images are requested from the server. It's a different type of timing attack to determine information about the web browser if the web browser isn't being used. So that's possibly another way of being able to identify a user if you look if you look at that type of stuff. That's that's unfortunately a really hard example, but that's an example of how to do that type of analysis. Um, now, of course, the other thing you could do is really, really, really cheap, which is to set up an endpoint uh, for Tor and monitor all of that traffic uh, that's going over the wire, which would be cheating, but you would be able to see for anyone that exits Tor through your exit node, you'll be able to look at all of the traffic. And unfortunately, or fortunately, because Tor is being run through volunteers, you just have no idea what's happening when you use Tor, um, who, where Tor is actually exiting out. So that's something to be aware of. Um, as an aside, you can specify the country or specific router that you want Tor to exit out of. Um, you do need to edit the configuration file to allow for this because it is a risk, a security risk. Because I believe I mentioned this before, but if you can force a user to exit out of a specific ex exit node, at that point, you can write custom content for that particular user uh, so that more identifying information could be uh, pertained. If you knew someone was going to be exiting out of your exit node, you could custom write scripts to identify the user. Uh, so that is um, one thing to be aware of. Um, but that said, it can be done if you need to defeat IPG allocation techniques. Because you can exit out of a, of a specific computer. 
Tor will allow you to randomly exit out different ones, but if you need to be exiting from a particular machine, you can do that. So if you I'm need to figure out how this is better than the standard. It's really not. The the only thing is is that like for instance, the US has the thing where you can't export crypto. Like in theory, if I was in another country, you could say uh, I want this connection to persist only in the US, only using this machine. That would be the type of stuff where you would use it. That's really the only case where that would, that would make a difference. So you could use this to watch the BBC from here? Exactly. Now, I've tried it, it's too slow, but you could do it. Ray! Seems like we were going forever on, on this topic. Uh, this, but so far, so good for everyone. Okay. Uh, let's say right now it's 2.49-ish, maybe 3 o'clock.